You've probably heard stories of tanks bogged down in the mud, entire columns stalled because a few armoured beasts sank into soft ground. But what if I told you that soldiers back in World War II, without cranes, hydraulics or fancy recovery gear, used nothing but rope, leverage and brain power to lift multi-ton tanks out of the earth? This wasn't Hollywood. It was field ingenuity at its best, a forgotten rope trick that saved machines, lives and missions. And if you're serious about survival, engineering or battlefield history, this technique carries lessons that can still save your gear, your vehicle or even your life today. So let's dive deep into the lost mechanics behind the rope lift that moved what seemed immovable. How the problem began. Tanks were powerful but helpless in the mud. World War II turned Europe's farmlands and forests into mud pits. Tanks like the Sherman T-34 and Panzer IV weighed upwards of 30 tons, and once they sank axle-deep into a marsh or crater, they were dead weight. The problem wasn't just traction, it was suction. Wet ground can form a vacuum around heavy treads, making even a tank's engine useless. Tow cables snapped. Recovery vehicles couldn't reach the front lines. So soldiers turned to physics, not horsepower. That's where this rope trick was born an improvised solution based on ancient rigging techniques that sailors, builders and loggers had used for centuries. What they did was simple in concept but brilliant in execution. They created mechanical advantage using rope, pulleys and what's called a Spanish windlass. Ah, the secret was mechanical advantage, not brute strength, you see. At its core, the Spanish windlass was a clever method of amplifying human strength through tension. Soldiers, they carried strong rope, usually hemp, manila or wire core line, and scavenged pipes, shovel handles or even rifle barrels to act as twisting levers. Now, here's how it worked. One end of the rope was anchored around something solid, like a tree, another tank or even a buried log. The other end was looped under the sunken tank's tow hooks. Then, by inserting a stick or iron bar between the two rope sections and twisting, the rope tightened, much like a winch. Each rotation, well, it built incredible tension, slowly pulling the tank upward or forward just a few inches at a time. With several soldiers taking turns, twisting, resetting and tightening, even a 30-ton vehicle could be dragged from the muck, inch by inch. What made this method so valuable, you ask? It required no machinery, just rope, leverage and teamwork. The math behind it, oh, is pure physics. A properly coiled windlass can generate several thousand pounds of pull per turn. Soldiers learned this from field manuals and passed it along as unofficial shop talk. By the end of the war, even armoured recovery units used rope windlasses as backup tools when steel cables or winches failed. Now, let's talk about how this age-old rope trick can still serve you today. If you're, say, a prepper, an overlander, or someone travelling off-grid, this World War II technique is still absolute gold. Imagine your truck or ATV gets bogged down in clay or wet sand and you've got no winch at hand. The principle, well, it remains exactly the same. Anchor a strong rope to a solid tree or a hefty boulder, attach the other end to your vehicle's frame and find yourself a sturdy bar, maybe an axe handle, a tire iron, or even the shaft of a shovel. Twist the rope into tension, lock it off with a wedge or a loop, and then just repeat the process. 
you'll actually feel the vehicle start to shift as the mechanical advantage multiplies your effort. It's slow, yes, I'll give you that. But what you're harnessing is deliberate power, the very same kind that once saved tanks under fire. The technique also teaches a deeper survival mindset. When your tools fail, knowledge becomes your true gear. In modern survival terms, this little trick is really a lesson in field physics. You're learning to manipulate force, tension and friction, concepts that honestly can be applied to building shelters, hoisting heavy logs or freeing stuck vehicles when all your modern gear gives out. It's not just nostalgia, it's usable engineering wisdom. You know, during the Second World War, soldiers actually trusted rope more than steel when it really counted. Now, you might wonder why they didn't always just rely on steel cables. Well, they did when they could, of course. But those cables, they frayed, they kinked, and they failed under repeated stress. Rope, on the other hand, absorbed shock much better. It could be doubled, tripled, or even braided for extra strength, which is pretty clever if you think about it. And when soaked, hemp ropes would swell and grip even better. That's why, honestly, engineers and tank crews often carried spools of heavy rope as backup equipment. In one recorded incident during the Italian campaign of 1944, a British armoured crew used a windlass of layered hemp ropes and a broken gun barrel to pull a disabled Stuart light tank out of a shell crater. It took four men, 40 minutes and an understanding of leverage. But, you know, it worked when nothing else could. That kind of quiet ingenuity never made headlines, but it won battles of endurance. So, why should historians and survivalists care about this little trick? Well, for serious history buffs, this is a perfect example of battlefield adaptation the intersection of human creativity and raw necessity. It really shows that survival is rarely about having the best gear. It's about knowing how to manipulate what you have. For modern preppers, this rope trick is more than just a curiosity. It's, well, a transferable principle. It proves that mechanical advantage can actually replace machines when power is scarce. If you ever find yourself stranded, building a shelter or, you know, lifting debris after a disaster, the same method absolutely applies. You know, you can move fallen trees, hoist water barrels, or even free trapped vehicles by applying these old-school mechanics. That's really the genius of W. E. Fieldcraft. It wasn't just for war, it was built for survival under pressure. The takeaway, honestly, is that knowledge weighs nothing. Every generation, it seems, forgets something the last one learned through sweat and grit. The rope trick that lifted tanks is one of those near-loss skills a reminder that physics, patience and persistence can overcome even 30 tons of steel. So, whether you're a historian fascinated by wartime engineering or a survivalist preparing for the worst, keep this lesson. Close knowledge is the ultimate force multiplier. If you enjoyed uncovering this forgotten WB2 technique and want more real-world lessons from the battlefield that still matter today, make sure to hit subscribe, drop a comment about what you'd like us to cover next, and share this with someone who loves history with muscle behind it. Because on this channel, the past isn't just remembered, it's relearned for survival.